I worry that the worldwide reaction to the disclosures uh, about NSA surveillance uh, may do serious damage to the Internet as we know it. Uh, for me and for my colleagues at the Department of Commerce, uh, uh, which oversees uh, communications and information policy, among other things, uh, protecting uh, an Internet to, that is free and open uh, uh, and uh, free of government control and an engine of innovation, uh, growth, uh, and freedom uh, was a responsibility and a mission uh, that we took very seriously. Uh, when I first joined the Obama administration uh, in 2009, I sat down to uh, uh, try to frame why uh, we should work on privacy. Uh, to try to crystallize why uh, privacy and security uh, were important uh, to uh, that, uh, that mission. Uh, and I uh, wrote a short paragraph uh, with the, uh, the simple proposition, maybe obvious uh, proposition, that trust uh, is essential to the online environment because uh, consumers who go online uh, need to know that their information is safe and secure. Uh, and businesses who collect and use that information depend on that trust uh, from consumers. That became the operating premise for our work uh, on privacy and, and security. And most of us believed that trust was at risk uh, from some kind of major event. Uh, uh, you know, like a massive uh, data breach uh, or intrusion by hackers. Uh, but we thought uh, that that was likely to come in the private sector. Instead, it looks uh, like that sort of major event uh, may be the reports of surveillance by the U.S. government. I'm, we are due. Uh, here in the United States, with allies in Europe, with countries and citizens around the world, for uh, a serious discussion uh, about uh, not only uh, surveillance, but a wide range of international norms in digital space. Uh, it's about privacy and security, yes, but also uh, uh, about intelligence uh, gathering and cybersecurity, about uh, intellectual uh, property, uh, about due process, uh, about how we govern the global uh, internet. And that sort of serious conversation is being drowned out uh, by political rhetoric, uh, economic protectionism, uh, and by efforts uh, of nation states to exploit uh, the issue to get political control over the Internet uh, uh, by controlling the flow of information uh, across their borders. China's Great Firewall is the epitome of that. I am, so you know, America today uh, you know, needs uh, to take uh, strong steps uh, to rebuild uh, trust. Uh, the stakes uh, are large uh, for innovation, for our economic futures, uh, and for Internet uh, openness uh, and freedom. So what do we do? Uh, let me try to suggest uh, a few steps that will make a difference. Uh, above all, uh, we need to affirm uh, our deeply held privacy values. Americans uh, have always uh, cared uh, about privacy. It's part of the distrust of government uh, that is a deep part of our political culture. It's part of that uh, don't tread on me uh, spirit. Privacy uh, is part of our liberty, uh, our freedom to define ourselves, uh, and our physical and virtual space. Uh, and, you know, one of my jobs in the Obama administration was uh, to talk to Europeans and other countries uh, about privacy and to try to uh, bring uh, uh, our countries and our frameworks uh, closer together. And I often ran into the impression that uh, Americans 
don't care about privacy. You know, that's just not the case. Uh, privacy is deeply embedded in American values uh, and laws. You know, we don't have uh, uh, a single privacy law like uh, some other countries. Uh, we have a body uh, of laws, uh, uh, you know, specific uh, protections for uh, medical files, financial uh, uh, information, uh, for uh, student records, uh, among other uh, specific sectors. Uh, we have tort laws. We have laws in 46 states uh, that require uh, notification of data breaches. Uh, and we have uh, enforcement uh, of privacy practices and promises by our Federal Trade Commission and state attorneys general, among other protections. Um, and in fact, the, uh, the privacy principles, the fair information practice principles that underlie uh, most of the privacy regimes uh, around the world uh, originated in the United States. Uh, and many companies in America employ chief privacy officers uh, by their own choice uh, because those principles uh, have gotten wide uh, adoption uh, in the commercial marketplace. Uh, you know, when it comes to government surveillance, uh, the United States does not steal trade secrets from foreign companies to give them to our companies. Um, and nor does the United States uh, uh, use surveillance to repress its own citizens or the citizens of any other country uh, because of uh, political or religious uh, or other uh, beliefs. Uh, our intelligence agencies have laid out uh, some of the safeguards uh, that are in place in uh, online intelligence gathering uh, to ensure that uh, uh, it complies with our Constitution, with laws, uh, and with good privacy practices. You know, in a big data age, uh, security consists of searching for needles in haystacks. Uh, and that's exactly what NSA does. The safeguards uh, help ensure uh, that they're zeroing in on the needles. And you know, keep in mind that Many of the same countries that have criticized the United States engage in spying themselves. Some of them engage in economic uh, espionage. Most of them don't have uh, the same sets of judicial and legislative and privacy protections uh, that the United States does. You know, warrants, uh, audits, uh, chief privacy officers, uh, civil liberties officers, uh, uh, an independent uh, oversight board. But for all that, uh, it is not enough to rest uh, on what we do right, uh, because there's more that we can do uh, to protect uh, privacy. Uh, we need to uh, restore trust uh, that information uh, online uh, will be safe uh, and secure and used in ways uh, that are consistent uh, with individuals' expectations. Uh, in both government surveillance and a collection of information by the private sector. We need to take concrete steps uh, to strengthen privacy protections and update uh, existing protections uh, for uh, the 21st century. I am, uh, you know, in this uh, world today, I'm, uh, our phones, uh, our cars, uh, our appliances, and the world around us uh, are expanding the volume and the velocity and the variety of data streams uh, and the capacity to uh, collect and store and analyze the information uh, that those streams contain. Uh, now, the temptation may be to say, you know, let's, we need to stop all that. But information is like water. Uh, it will find uh, ways to flow. Uh, we can't go backward. Uh, we should not uh, react in fear. Uh, we can embrace the benefits, uh, but we also need to be smart uh, about uh, the risks. Uh, so it's important to focus on what happens to that information, who gets it, to, uh, how it's used, and how it's safeguarded. That's the idea behind the 
uh, the White House blueprint on consumer privacy that we released in February of 2012. Uh, it uh, articulates a consumer privacy bill of rights, seven principles, uh, individual control, uh, transparency, respect for the context in which information uh, is provided, uh, security, uh, focused collection, uh, access and accuracy, uh, and accountability. Uh, this is based on uh, those fair information practice uh, uh, principles that are globally accepted, but uh, adapted to a world that's moved from big uh, institutional mainframe databases uh, to uh, computers uh, everywhere, collecting uh, unstructured uh, data all the time. Uh, the focus on using a set of principles uh, is intended to be nimble and adaptable to fast-changing technology uh, with a minimum of government uh, prescription. Uh, you know, self-regulation alone uh, is not enough uh, today. Uh, but we also need to be careful not to over-regulate in uh, a digital space uh, uh, where innovation uh, is important. So it's time to enact that Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights into law uh, so that we can establish a baseline in areas uh, that are not covered today. Um, consumers uh, and businesses both uh, will benefit from having a clear roadmap uh, and it will send a strong message uh, to the world uh, that the United States cares about privacy. When it comes to, uh, to government uh, surveillance, uh, uh, it's time to update uh, our standards uh, uh, and make clear that uh, the same principles that we would apply to business uh, uh, you know, are important uh, uh, in the gov uh, to government surveillance. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, government uh, surveillance follows uh, the same kind of principles we ask uh, of business. Um, last summer, uh, President Obama called for uh, a national conversation on security and privacy. He uh, directed some steps to look at our intelligence gathering capabilities and expressed uh, a desire to work with Congress uh, on uh, changes to our surveillance laws. Uh, as uh, we look at those laws, look at those practices, it's time to say that just because certain surveillance uh, is legal and we can do it, uh, doesn't mean that we should do it. The principle of focused collection means uh, making considered decisions about what information to collect. And it's time to change what's known as the third party doctrine, a legal rule that says that uh, information uh, that you give to a third party, like bank records, uh, belongs to that third party and makes it easier for the government to get the information from the third party uh, rather than going to court to get a warrant to get it from you. Uh, you know, in an age of uh, mobile computing uh, and cloud computing in which we share data with third parties all the time, uh, we can't say that you know, all of that information is outside your control. Uh, and it's time to, uh, to put into uh, place uh, some explicit standards to protect uh, the citizens of foreign countries uh, so that we can send a clear message uh, that the United States government is not going to spy uh, indiscriminately on uh, global uh, communications traffic. You know, in a 21st century free and open uh, society. We are going to depend uh, more and more every day uh, on digital information and communications to transact uh, business and to move goods and services uh, and ideas uh, across borders. The United States and other democratic countries share uh, a commitment to a free and an open internet that is governed uh, uh, by a system uh, uh, run primarily by the private sector uh, and uh, contributing and, and enabling uh, you know, growth uh, uh, and innovation and freedom around the world. 
it would be a sad outcome of surveillance disclosures uh, if they lead uh, to internet uh, policy making and governance uh, in which countries become a series of walled gardens with governments uh, holding the keys to locked gates. But that's exactly where we will end up uh, uh, if all information has to stay on servers located in the country in which it is generated uh, uh, and you need government permission to move it across borders. The digital world does not need another great firewall uh, in Europe or anywhere else. You know, it was a European, uh, a Frenchman, Alexis de Tocqueville, who observed that the greatness of America lies not in being more enlightened than any other country, but in her ability to repair her faults. Uh, in that spirit, uh, we should have a serious conversation uh, in America and abroad uh, with honesty uh, and humility. It's up to us uh, to protect uh, an open internet uh, by restoring trust. It's up to us uh, as citizens. Uh, it's up to us uh, as free individuals. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.